Hello friends, welcome back. From the last video, we had started learning of data analysis into the Microsoft Excel. As a first part of it, we had seen how to set a data analysis option in Microsoft Excel in detail. Now, in this video, we are going to understand first important tool that we can perform into the Microsoft Excel. The tool is One Way ANOVA. This is also called as a One Factor ANOVA. So let's start learning of this important tool one by ANOVA with the help of practical example in Microsoft Excel. Before going into the detail, let's first understand what is one way ANOVA and what's its practical application. There is one more hypothesis test that we can use when we are going to compare two samples and the test is two sample t-test. Two sample t-test is used to compare the means of only two samples. But in practical situation, most of the time we need to compare more than two means. For example, we need to compare results produced by three different test equipments, three different machines or three different shapes. We cannot use a t-test to compare these means. Now in this situation, we need to use ANOVA. The full form of the ANOVA is analysis of variance. Analysis of variance is a tool used to compare three or more means. It is a very powerful tool that uses variation in samples to compare means. When we go to the example, we will learn in detail how we are going to use the variation in samples to compare the means. But before going into the detail for the practical example, let's understand what are the hypotheses in ANOVA. The null hypothesis is H0 colon mu1 is equal to mu2 is equal to mu3 is equal to mu n. That means all the population means are equal. Whereas the alternative hypothesis is H1 colon any one of the population mean is different. That means in entire comparisons, if any one of the population mean is different, that will be highlighted by the analysis of variance test. Now before to use one way ANOVA, there are three important assumptions that we need to remember. The first assumption is residuals are independent and normally distributed with mean is equal to zero and constant variance. The second assumption is Population variation of the output is equal across all levels of the given factor. This assumption can be tested with the test of equal variance. And the third important assumption of the ANOVA is response means are independent and are normally distributed. Up to this point, we have understood what is a one-way ANOVA, what its application, what are the null hypothesis and alternative hypothesis in it, and one more important thing, what are the three important assumptions of one-way ANOVA. Now, let's jump into the practical example to understand how we can perform the one-way ANOVA into the Microsoft Excel. Let's consider the example of the customer care call handling department. The supervisor is concerned about the difference in time with respect to the different teams required to resolve the query. To investigate that and to go into the detail of it, the engineer collects the data of eight calls per shifts for three shifts. Now, if you can see here, we are going to compare more than two samples. That means we are going to compare the time for three different shifts. So he decided to test the significance of the mean by performing one-way ANOVA. This is the data collected by the engineer for all three shifts. A, B and C are three shifts and next to them, we have time to resolve the query. Here we can see for each of the shift, engineer has collected eight number of observations. Now coming back to the hypothesis, can you please help me to express what will be the null hypothesis and alternative hypothesis in this example. The null hypothesis will be H0 colon mean of A is equal to mean of B is equal to mean of C. That means all the shapes are having the same time to resolve the query. Whereas the alternative hypothesis will be H1 colon any one of the mean is different. That means any one shift is having either less or more time to resolve the query. Once we formulate the null hypothesis and alternative hypothesis, let's go into the Microsoft Excel to perform one way ANOVA. We can see here, this is the data which is collected by engineer for all the three shifts A, B and shift C. There are eight number of observations which is collected by engineer for each of these shifts. Now, we cannot perform the 
one way ANOVA on this set of data. To perform the one way ANOVA on this data, we need to formulate the data into some format. So what is that format? In Microsoft Excel, to perform the one way ANOVA, we need to put that data into this format. That means we need to enter all the shift day timing into the one column. We need to put all the shift B time in another column and shift C time in third column. So we can see each column is representing the number of observations for particular shift. To perform the one way ANOVA or one factor ANOVA in Microsoft Excel, please follow the procedure. Go to the data and then go to the data analysis. In data analysis, we need to select the option ANOVA as a single factor. We are selecting this option for ANOVA as a single factor because we are only interested to identify what is the variation in the time that is taken by each of the shift to resolve the query. So select this option ANOVA single factor and then click OK. After selection of this option, the ANOVA single factor window will be open. Now here we need to provide what is the input range. Click on this arrow and select the input range from A1 to C9. Once we select this entire input range, then click enter. There is another term named group by and here is already default grouping by the column. If you look at our example, we are also having the grouping into the columns. So keep the default selection of column as it is. As we had already selected the labels in the first row, so check this option because we have selected the labels that is shift A time, shift V time and shift C time into the first row. Alpha value by default it is a 0 0.05 and we need to keep it as a default. Why we need to keep it as a default? For that purpose we need to understand the p-value in detail. You can learn the p-value in detail by visiting my video on the p-value but now here let's focus on one way ANOVA. So keep the default selection of alpha as 0 0.05 there are different output options are available for our analysis. We can have the output range anywhere into the same worksheet. We can have the new worksheet ply or we can also have the new workbook. Now let's select this new worksheet ply as it is a default selection and click OK. Once we perform this analysis, we can see we are getting the analysis of variance single factor analysis in detail. Now let's understand what is the interpretation of these results. I will also explain how we are going to use variation in each of the samples to identify what is the difference in means. There are two important sections of this analysis. First one is summary and another one is ANOVA. Let's understand them in detail. For summary, we can see there are three different groups. Shift A time, Shift B time and Shift C time. For each of these, we are having the eight number of counts. For each of the shift timing, we are having the sum. What is the cumulative sum for each all of these observations? And what is the average for the shift A time, shift B time and shift C time? We can also see what are the variances of all the observations that we are having for shift A, shift B and shift C. By looking at all these observations, we can see that the shift B is taking more time, which is 4.73 minutes whereas shift A is taking lesser time which is around 3.85 minutes. But from these observations we are not able to express whether there is a significant difference between shift A, shift B or shift C. For that purpose we need to see second section of this analysis which is ANOVA, analysis of variance. Now here we are having two sources of variation. The first one is between groups and second one is within groups. I have explained this analysis of variance table in very detail into the regression analysis. The first column is about sum of squares. So this is indicating that the between groups sum of square is 3.122 and within groups it is 1.966. Degree of freedom stands for the number of independent comparisons. As we are having the three number of shapes, the between groups degrees of freedom will be 3 minus 1 which is equal to 2. And as we are having the total number of observations as 24, so the total number of degrees of freedom will be 24 minus 1 which will be equal to 23. That means the number of degrees of freedom that are available for the within groups or the error term will be 24 minus 2 minus 1 that will be equal to 21. The next column is about the mean of squares that will be the ratio of sum of squares divided by degrees of freedom. 
so we will get the mean of squares as 1.56 and 0.093 if we take the ratio of these two means of squares we will get the f calculated that is coming as 16.67 we can also get the f critical by using the statistical formula to calculate the critical value for the f f critical is auto calculated by the excel during the performing this one way anova test but just for your information we can also calculate this f critical by using the formula f inverse so here what is the formula f inverse right tail probability that is a formula that we need to use then we need to use what is the alpha value the alpha value that we are using as a 0.05 then we need to mention what is the degree of freedom for the between groups or for the factor term and what is the degree of freedom for the error term or for the within groups so here we can calculate by using this formula is equal to f inverse right tail probability into bracket 0.05 comma 2 comma 21 bracket close and enter so you will get the value as 3.47 now if you compare the f calculated and f critical we can see that f calculated is beyond this f critical so there is a significant difference between any one of these means if you don't want to go into the detail of statistics then forget it just focus on this p value if the p value is less than 0.05 which is the significance level that we have decided then we can conclude that there is at least one mean which is significantly different from other samples so the engineer concluded here there is a one ship which is taking more time to resolve the query compared to the other two ships now if you compare the means here we can see that that is a ship b but again it is somewhat difficult to understand to every person so we can use the graphical tools here i am also showing you one of the graphical tools here now what is a graphical tool that we can use in this situation any idea yes it is a box plot okay so let's perform the box plot on this data this is our data right so to perform the box plot go to the insert we can see here into the chart options we are having multiple charts and if you click on this histogram option we can see there is a box and whisker plot so click on that so there is a box plot for time to resolve the query by all three ships we can also adjust the scale of this graph if you can look at here into the entire data we can see there is no data which is less than 3 minutes and no data point which is more than 5 minutes so we can adjust the scale click right click on this axis select the format axis tab here minimum value we can have as a 3 and maximum value we can have a 5 we are making this change to display the results more apparently here we can see what are the timings for the shift a shift b and shift c again for easy understanding we can also add the legends here click on this plus symbol and select here as a legends so again if you select this legend option it is again easy to understand to everyone right so we can see here we can see the blue one is for the shift a time the orange one is for the shift b time and this third one gray one is for the shift c time just by looking at the chart we can see there is a difference between the timings we can also edit the chart title for more clarity let's put it as a box plot for time to resolve query Now let me ask you a question if you are that engineer who is going to study this timing which is the shift on which we are going to work of course shift b right because shift b is taking more time to resolve the query compared to the shift a and shift c so this is the practical application of anova by using analysis of variance for one factor we can compare three samples at a time to identify whether there is a significant difference between their means and we are using the variation between them to understand whether there is a difference in mean or not in this example we can see shift b is taking significantly higher time 
to resolve the query compared to the shift A and shift C. This is all about ANOVA 1 factor or one way ANOVA in Microsoft Excel. If you want to learn one way ANOVA, how to perform it in Minitab or Sigma Excel, please check my video on the Minitab or Sigma Excel. We will see another important tool to perform data analysis in Excel into the next video. If you want to prioritize some of the topic, please mention that into the comment box. At the end of this video, if you found this information useful, then please do not forget to like, comment and subscribe. If you want to learn Lean Six Sigma and Minitab most effectively and practically, then please visit at vijayasabe.co slash join or successfulcareerhub.com slash courses. One more important thing, if you want to support me or appreciate my efforts, you can also join my YouTube channel by clicking the join button at my YouTube channel. By joining this YouTube channel, you are not only supporting me, but also getting an access to the perks that can help you in your career goal. Thank you for watching and see you in the next video.